Now, David Brady, good morning to you. How are you? Jared, how's things, buddy? Shane? Morning, David. Top well, of the morning. Welcome back. I never left, as the man says. Never left. But uh, good to be good to be back chatting again. And uh, as the man said, loving it. Loving it, I have to say. the uh, It's great to be back uh, immersed in a different type of football as well. Yeah, one that you don't get. Um, you're not at the, the cold face as such. Have you decompressed as you've returned to civilian life? Uh, look, uh, I have to say I, I very, very, very much enjoyed my uh, year managing last year with uh, Rath Oath. Um, absolutely fantastic bunch of players. Really, really got a lot out of it. And again, it was uh, fun. Fun, enjoyed it and uh, a little bit of success thrown in. But that's, you know, that's the, the it was something that I wanted to do. And unfortunately, um, I couldn't continue from a from a work perspective and uh I'm, uh I'm it's nice to be back and watching five and six games every weekend now from a, a national league perspective and not being gone four nights a week and your son asking where's where's daddy where is he gone to football when i'm only gone to the toilet but um, <laughs> yeah that's that's the way it was ending up to be honest with you so yeah yeah it's good it's good but uh i miss it i miss it terribly to be honest with you Okay, um, can we can we talk about this for a little bit? Because I, I, I don't think everybody fully appreciates the level of commitment that it takes to manage a club team who are aspiring to be successful at the, the level that you guys were last year and the, the knock-on impact that it has. And look, we're going to talk about the Donegal situation a little bit later on with Amy McGee, but like, you know, this is people's hobby that has taken up so much of their lives. So how do you, uh, like, uh, do you see yourself going back to that at some point? Have you had your taste now, and and that's it? You're you're, you've you've sated that hunger, or what, what's the own kind of tension that you have in your own head about what happens next? Honestly, it's it's bloody bloody made it worse. The hunger, um, <laughs> so it has, and uh, and it's not just a team that's aspiring to be maybe winning a county championship, and you know, uh, it, it it's it's any manager, any person that I see that is involved with a club team, whether it's a selector, coach, or manager. I take my hat off to them because it's an unbelievable effort. It's an unbelievable effort because nobody is just doing it half hours. It's not tokenistic. It's absolutely all in. And uh, yeah, I knew exa- I knew exactly what it was going to be like. Um, the commitment that's needed from a manager's perspective, from a from a life perspective, um, and it 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 was it superseded that. And uh, it's a phenomenal amount of time. Like in Rathout, we were four nights a week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Every single week. That's just on the pitch. Um, but it, it's it's the time off it, and it's it's you can't just be a manager on the pitch. You have to, you know, off the pitch and everything else. It's 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 a phenomenal amount of time. You come home from training, and your phone then is your focus because then you're organising, you're touching base, you know. And it's it's it's, and if you have that collective buy-in from a club and from the players um from the panel like we had a panel of, of 36 um you, you, you have to respect each and every individual that that puts their their shoulder to the wheel in, in club football and and let me tell you Jar, um there's it's 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 not for the it's not for the so-called money that 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 people are doing it it's um it's really really for me i got so much out of it we could have lost the county final we didn't and uh we'd we had a nice run in Leinster, and uh, I, 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 I want more of it, but I just couldn't, I couldn't commit. Like I'm, 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 I'm joining from Vienna today from a from a work perspective, but that's that's another story. But um, I loved it, absolutely, and it's whetted my appetite. It's not for the faint-hearted either, David. Like we saw the emotion with, from you with some of the interviews after matches, and even action on the sidelines during games as well, which is brilliant to see because you live and breathe every moment. But it's similar. I remember chatting to Davy Burke, the the Roscommon manager, about this, and he said that you know after matches on a Sunday he'd come home absolutely exhausted, having not played himself, just living and breathing every moment on the sidelines. Was that something for yourself as well? Like, do, do, you, do you come home from games? Just completely beaten. Um, you do, but it's 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 not that that sideline situation. It's the build up to it. It's the week before, and you know, again, as the games goes on and it gets it gets more important. Um, it does it does kind of say to yourself, God, oh, I need to breathe out. But then you're again, you're back you're back at work on Monday morning. Like Davy has done a phenomenal job um, in Roscommon, and I remember talking to Davy, and I I I was and I committed to going with Davy as part of his his ticket for Kildare. And he had a young child. And I'm going, Jesus, David, are you mad altogether? 
And, you know, very, a young baby. It was only, like, weeks, I think, a couple of, three or four months. But um, it's it's that commitment, but you have to refocus, reset. Um, but it's a, it's about a game of balance. And I think people think about these, you know, uh, backroom teams in, in inter-county especially. But you need it. You need it because there's so much to do. There's, it's a, it's a, it's twenty four seven, and you have to allow guys to take up three or four hours of that twenty four hours. I did not know that you had uh, um, committed to being part of of Davies' backroom team in Kildare. How how close do you think you guys got to to getting the gig? It's not a, you know your backroom is very important uh, on what they bring and the experience to bring. Um, Davy was was well there. Well, there. Very, very disappointed that he didn't get it. Um, but again, you say to yourself, if I was, as I said to David, I said, look, if we were in, this, in, in that interview panel, um, we'd have nearly given it to Glenn, Glenn and the guys, to be honest. And uh, you couldn't nearly but you couldn't nearly but. Uh, and again, it's 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 a hard ask. It's a hard ask. And again, yeah, you go in with great plans, great expectations, and. Uh, you you have a, you have a focus on what you want to deliver, and sometimes that's that 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 doesn't always uh, turn out to be that way. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, Davy Davy will um, at some stage uh, manage Kadir, but he'll uh, he'll take no questions on that over these over the next year or two because he's. Um, fully immersed in Roscommon and has done extremely well. Yeah, well, extremely that's, well. That's the thing. I'm sure a lot of people in Kildare are looking over the, the, the hedge and going, he seems to be like a kind of Jose Mourinho style, like effervescent character who comes and injects something immediately in and they're like, maybe we could have done with a little bit of that in our lives. And look, at, it'll, it'll happen for Kildare. So, well, it'll happen for Kildare and, and, you know, the timings mightn't be right. But um, then the guys still have a... a, a a job to do, and they'll they'll focus for the for the championship, so they will in the last game of the league. But um, there's and again with the league, and I see people criticising it, and you know it's n- nothing perfect. But um, for me, it's been a very very entertaining league, um, a very knowledgeable league. The way you know now you only have a short run in from a, from a league to championship. You don't have that lovely six weeks of maybe at times it was eight weeks of a window before your next championship game. Um, it's just constant and there's going to be no Houdini's pulled out of the hat. Um, a lot of things, what teams are working on, they're introducing into the National League and I can't see things being turned on their head. And, and, and you know, there'll be nuances and changes, but it won't won't change dramatically. I, I do feel like there's a, a period of the next three to five years maybe where we don't fully understand exactly how the calendar is going to work in favour or against some teams. Tommy was on with us yesterday and he was saying on the football pod they've been talking about the fact that I think, I, I, I might get this wrong now, but Armagh might have to win 13 games to get to the All-Ireland Final, whereas um, one of the other teams might only have to win seven or eight to get them. And that's, no, that doesn't feel like it's totally fair. Um, it's, yeah, that's that balance. And again, you know, from a male perspective, again, there's, 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 there's great talk and, and hope but again, you're eleven or twelve games away from their scenario and situation to get to a uh, to win in All Ireland. So it's 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 or it, or they get beaten in the first round of Connacht. They lick their wounds for the six weeks that they might have off before the start of the round robin, and they come out all guns blazing with an entirely you know preseason block, a couple of weeks of challenge matches, and then you you have your f- final team settled and ready to go and rested, and no suspensions and none of the controversies that are like cause there's been a conflagration in the Connacht final or the uh, Ulster final, unlikely in in either Munster or or Leinster. Like there is there is a world in which actually being knocked out early. Is going to end up being the best thing for some team. Oh, I look at on the ninth of April, I wouldn't take it as a my own man, but uh, on the tenth, I'd nearly take it um, because you have that ability. And again, there is there's uh, from a from a, a load perspective, I do know that the the Mayo training um, is massively high. Their intensity is 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 right up there because it's 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 so consistent. The games are coming, you know, nearly week in week out. You play your last game this weekend, then you're looking at a national league final, and then you're looking at Roscommon. So it's it's there's no time to you know say oh we need to put an extra load or high intensity or you know it's 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 been done now uh, and it's 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 bearing it's bearing rewards from my own perspective. But um, yeah, you would go that six weeks would be lovely just to really get certain players back into the groove. And again, you know as, as all successful teams, the Dublins, the Kilkennys of this world. I've always went to their A versus Bs were more important to them or more vital to them in their in their journeys than uh, the actual championship games themselves. 
Does the league take on more significance now, David? Listening to Kevin McStay after the uh, win over Donegal for Mayo last week, he was saying they're delighted to be back in the league final because of how close it is to the championship. Like I'm sure the the hype train, as it always is in Mayo, is is, is quite strong. But in particular, how given how well they're playing, it's uh, it's really taken off from the station at the moment. Uh, look, it's it's it's, it's I, 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 the one thing I find now. But this year with Kevin and the team is it's not about hype and I, I love I love Kevin's attitude after games talking just as you know there's no oh the process and we did this and everyone is different Kevin is Kevin is a, a very unique individual but I love his um, his openness and it's about they're setting out a plan they're setting out a stall but they're enjoying it and and uh, again it, it's it's about integrating a lot of young players there that I, th- I think, you know, will be challenged a lot more than they have been in the league during championship. Um, but it, it is that it is the fluidity. And ask any player, the one thing they don't mind doing, the one thing they don't mind doing is playing games. They're only 70 minutes. It's a focus at the end of the week. Um, and it's, 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 look, at it's a lot more enjoyable when you're winning. And that's, that's what Mayo have done throughout this league. And uh, from that, you get positivity and confidence. And... They are they are at the moment the best team playing the best football in the country. Um, Kevin seems different as the matter than I expected him to be. Like there's no guardedness, there's no there's no there's no punditry, there's no analysis of what's going on. There's just a, these are my truths. I'm answering your questions, and we're happy. Like I, and we're happy to be this open. And it's a very different approach to everybody else who's like desperately trying to keep secrets. Or not, not be themselves, and in a way, and I hate to bring everything back and rugby at the moment, but like, there's a bang of Andy Farrell off it. There's a bang of being yourself off it, and that's a, as a manager, you have to decide: am I going to be the stereotypical, or am I going to, you know, rein myself in? And yeah, you know, you have to be measured, and yet you don't want to be given the the, the game away. But you just be yourself. Be yourself. Now everyone is different. Everyone is different. I'm different from you. Shane is different from me. So you have that personality and, you know, you have that kind of, there's a, not there wouldn't be a naivety with Kevin because he has been there and he's, he's, he's won Connacht championships. He's been with Roscom and he's won an All-Ireland club. But sometimes you kind of go, just be yourself. That's all you ever, that's all you ever ask. And managers are different. People are different. Personalities are different. But there is that kind of, just be open. And I think a lot of it is, the responsibility, like Andy Farrell, like the Kevin McSays and like the Jim Gavins of this world, that is, you put the responsibility and the onus and the ownership on the players and their time to deliver and their time to talk and to, to um, present themselves is when the ball is thrown in and when the game is on. And I think that's, it's 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 nearly refreshing, but we it shouldn't be, it's refreshing for someone just to be natural and, you know, talk it as it is. Now, look at when, if, if, if there's a defeat or there's a, there's a, a sticky situation which there will be over the next 12, 24, 36 months in Kevin's reign. Um, he might, you know, he might talk a little bit of different, but just it's, I have to say from the Mayo supporters' perspective, um, they're, they're really, they're really um, loving what Kevin is bringing and uh, it's, it's, um, it's shown on the pitch. They obviously lost two key members of the defensive setup over the winter and we weren't sure if it was going to happen and it did happen but they haven't really batted an eyelid. Like, obviously, maybe later on in the year, they'll be like, oh, that's an Oshie Mullen-sized hole or that's a Lee Keegan-sized hole and we'll see what happens. But how have they made up for that? Is it Are there individuals who are stepping up or is there a, a change in defensive structure that is allowing them to, to deal with that? And again, is it too early for me to be saying that actually they're okay? Um, they will be tested. They're, they're, they're from a, a, a young... You know, when you have the likes of Jack Coyne or Sam Callahan who came in the last day, I think for it was nearly Sam's, you know, second second uh, league appearance as such. David McBrien, you know, these are young young guys. Uh, you had Paul Cahora coming on the last day, which was a good sign. I think um, what we all kind of introduced this year, um, and again, not that we've we've struggled, but again, when you're losing the leagues and you're losing the Ushings, um, you're going where do we where do we circumvent that? But how do we make it? To our advantage, and I think they really have embedded uh, Connor Loftus as a centre back, but not as a centre back where we we would know it from his what you might what you call a plus one. He really is. He, he's dropping. He's covering. He's allowing that leverage for others to come back. And you know your defensive system is based on the guys that's willing to put their shoulder to the wheel. And I think for me, and he was missing last year to injury. 
and he's probably one of the unsung heroes in the Mayo setup. But he is absolutely vital. I don't think I've seen a midfielder or a, a player with his work ethic. Probably Paul Flynn reminds me a little bit. Is is um, like it, it, it's 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 he is absolutely absolutely vital, and it's Jordan Flynn. Jordan is absolutely key to this team, and um, the work that he does, and again the link that he goes back and lets Connor sit as a plus one um, numerous times. Uh, it is it is vital, and that's what Mayo have kind of introduced. And again, they've introduced something. That is, you know, a new concept to not necessarily that, but their 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 direct ball as well, and that's again a fingerprint to Donny Buckley. Um, Donny Buckley just doesn't do um, the same thing year in year out. Um, he introduces certain type of styles and conditions and, and uh, setups to to all the teams he's worked with. He goes away. Donny goes away at winter time and comes back with a whole new. Um, you know, you know, view on how football should be should be played and how you actually counteract what was what was done with the previous year from a successful team. He goes to America and uh, he's I can see his fingerprints all over this team. But it probably for me they're very very well set up and they're they're they kind of they're they're not rushing it. They're like they're they're, they're shots from play. They're 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 kind of um, productivity level is 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 top class and they're not panicking. They're keeping a great structure to their game. Um, the runners are really, really coming, you know, from deep, but they're allowing that ball to go in and you have that focus in Aiden O'Shea. That's the, that, you know, Aiden is there. And I see people this this week on Twitter saying, oh, look at what the work he's doing. Aiden O'Shea was never shy of work. He was never lazy. It was probably the, the, the position for him. The position for him was always really full forward. That was always the focus. Like uh, how, he, how he was picked... And, you know, from a centre back position, um, it didn't serve that man any justice at all. Um, I, we, we'll obviously have plenty of time to analyse exactly the role of O'Shea and, and how well he's fitted into that full forward role. And it's not a revolution, but obviously we've seen it before. But it's working out, and there's a confidence about the team. And maybe we'll we'll delve into that in the coming weeks. But I do want to ask you before we wrap up about Galway. Um, on Saturday, Joyce used nine players in the team that won the under twenty All Ireland three years ago. They were missing Comer, McDade, Cook, Jacqueline, Ian Burke, and it was Shane Walsh's first start back. They're second in the league, and they have the experience and the heartbreak of last year to to uh, propel them forward. A little bit under the radar for a team who were like toe to toe with a Kerry team who were kind of shooing in for the next dynasty. Uh, well, there's nobody under any illusion, especially here in the, in, in Mayo, that that Galway are now a massive dominant force in GEA. And again, you kind of you did ask the question after the All Ireland final: oh, Is that them gone? You know, is that them? Is it a setback or a step forward? And as you said there, um, it's for me, it's it's it was two steps forward. Um, they've used a lot of that under twenty one team, that younger team that that the Porik, um was involved in, and, and uh, he's now molding them into senior players. And their big players are only coming back. They're you know they're again. We've always talked about oh so you're missing Killian and oh, you're not the same. And look at um, Comer is is a massive link to them, a massive cog. But they, they, Galway will be a serious, serious force to be reckoned with. And again, your Connacht Championship, like, like, like I suppose Ulster to a degree, but your Connacht Championship has been the most competitive championship for the last decade in, in, in GA. And uh, Galway will be, uh, they'll be at the top table in some way, shape or form this year. It could end up now that you have a Galway Mayo um, National League final um, on Sunday week, which... Which was never, which you know, you kind of go. How does a team come back from the All Ireland? Do they grow? Do they gain? You know, confidence? Do they learn from the lessons? But Galway oh, have certainly, certainly done that. And it's credit to, to Porrick Joyce and and uh, and his team there. But it's um, it's definitely they're definitely are going to be at the top table in some way, shape, or form. DB, good to have you back. Thanks a million. Pleasure, Ger. Talk to you, buddy. See you, Shane. Cheers, David. So, David Brady, giving us some thoughts on the situation there, and uh, very interesting insight into just how much work it takes to be a club manager at this stage as well. I mean, 